The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. <clears throat> I made a couple of edits that were suggested, so wondering if everybody's okay with that. Looks good to me. Good to me. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so good here. Motion to approve. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Yes. Second. Okay. Third. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. 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 Yeah, okay. Great. Just declare it unanimous for the uh, <laughs> recording. Yes. Yeah. That was a unanimous vote. Okay. And then um, next on the agenda, affordable housing update. Um, the only thing I have to report, and then the, you know, Bill may have more to add, but um, so right now, um, uh, the Valley CDC did indeed appeal the ZBA ruling. Um, so at this point, um, the select board had an executive session and we had a joint executive session with the ZBA. Um, to find out what the options are going forward. Obviously, anything discussed in executive session, I can't divulge, um, but that's where it stands right now. Um, so there's there's some movement on that particular front. And Bill, did you have anything on affordable housing to? Uh, no, I have nothing else. Um, <clears throat> there is just a glimmer of an interesting comment from uh, uh, our state senator uh, last night at the select board meeting that uh, there seems to be some traction for adding a uh, an additional component to the deeds excise tax, uh, which would be tacked on to the sale price of homes that exceed something like three times the area standard. Um, and that would be funded, uh, directed towards affordable housing. We do have an affordable housing trust fund set up to receive funds like that. And uh, we're just following that with interest. We don't know where it'll go, but I would remind you that the uh, the deeds excise tax, way back it, it was a whopping $2.28 per thousand. Uh, Taxachusetts being what it is, it has now doubled to $4.56 per thousand. Uh, much of the additional 228 goes into the um, the state part of the CPA funds, and that's where we get the state match to our uh, local CPA. So um, there is some some grumbling about it, but as a practical matter, it's a fairly small piece of most transactions. It's a basically a sales tax assessed to the seller of the property. And uh, it will um, potentially one day raise some additional funding for affordable housing. Yeah. Not, not to be counted in this year's budget. Right. Are there many houses in our area that sell for three times? So I'm not exactly sure what all the numbers are going to work out to. I, I, I do tend to follow the property transactions in the uh, Gazette. Uh, there's a lot in the 400s range. So uh, we'd be looking at probably something selling for in excess of seven or $800,000 would be affected by it. And I don't know enough of the details to know whether it would just apply to residential properties or would also apply to commercial properties. Mm -hmm. So, no, it's, it's not going to hit a lot, mm -hmm. uh, but um, it is uh, you know, potentially, potentially interesting. I know it's a very great interest in um, a lot of the impetus came out of Boston. And Bill, my understanding, I, I think what Joe Comerford was saying as well is that even if this, you know, passes through the legislative, um, at the state level, that it's a local option, right? Every municipality would have the um, option to adopt and that there's, um, there's a fair amount of uh, flexibility within the language so that 
you could decide, you know, to put it on the, if, if in fact we even went that route, it would be our choice whether it was the seller paying it or if it was the buyer paying it. I mean, it sounded like it was very, very open-ended and it was by no means. Yeah, um, it, it, it's blurry at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that, um, you know, it looks like some, some folks have already, you know, uh, in town have are getting a bit excited about it, but I, I think this is not even close to being ready for, for prime time or, or any reason to celebrate or worry on either end of it, depending yep. on how you feel. So remember, we do have now a two-year legislative session, and we are in the first year of that. So everybody got reelected in November. Um, the session started in uh, January, and um, it, it, prior to, say, the past 10 years, it was a one-year legislative session, even though everybody was serving a two-year term. So every piece of legislation that didn't get acted on by December 31st had to um, be refiled the following January. Um, now we let something live for two years. Um, I don't know. Probably someone keeps track of whether that gets more things passed than the former system, but uh, I'm very much thinking this is something we might see in 2025, um, or not at all, but not before that, I don't think. Things rarely passed in the first session of the two-year cycle. Right. All right. Anything else on um, uh, affordable housing? Um, for what it's worth, I just heard about this like an hour ago, but the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is doing an info session on 40R on June 13th. So if anybody's interested, uh, I, think it's, I think it's free, but I just got an email about it. I haven't really digested it yet. Mm -hmm. I just got that too. I will. Uh, I'll send it to Molly for distribution to the. I've actually got it, Bill. Oh, you do. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll I'll forward that to the group that just came in this afternoon. So thanks, Justin, for um, uh, prompting that. So thank you, Molly, for sending it too. Sure. We uh, did have a discussion of 40R with uh, Karen Martin from PB. PVPC at our Tuesday planning board meeting. And we're trying to get a handle on, um, I'll, uh, I'll send the, uh, to you, Molly, I think maybe I did send to you the um, material she forwarded. I think I copied you on that when I sent it to the rest of the board. I think uh, so, yeah. I'll, I'll send it again. Um, there's some samples of what they've done in Northampton. Uh, mm -hmm. They have one parcel that's 30 acres and one parcel that's half an acre. So, we'll see. Wide range. <laughs> we could uh, do a 40R on the uh, Four Seasons parcel, maybe. <laughs> put it mixed it's use, but you, acre. but you put a uh, but you put a couple of us uh, rental apartments upstairs. Nice scraper. <laughs> Okay, great. Um, then next on the agenda, I had um, project updates. So Shardul Palmer was planning on joining us tonight. Um, at least I heard that indirectly from his brother. Um, so he may or may not hop on here. Uh, he was just going to talk a little bit about uh, their thought process around doing something different, I guess, is the best way to put it at this point with the, um, what uh, us locals refer to as the Happy Village Barn Shops, right? So that that strip where um, whole children has been for a while, that edible arrangements, uh, mayonnaise is over there. And, um, so uh, again, we'll wait and see if, if Shardul hops on. Um, other than that, the only update um, that I have is from Tom Reedy. I did uh, just reach back out to him to find out um, if there was any update on what the uh, Veritas uh, developers uh, 
you know, what their intent might be at this point. So if you recall, that's the project that was proposed of a relatively large scale development off of um, Rocky Hill Road, uh, approximate to 116, you know, what we refer to as the old Bab farm. Um, and so Tom indicated that based on his most recent conversations with the developers, um, that they were uh, regrouping. Um, they're intending to take all of the feedback that they've received into account. Um, and they're still um, trying to find a path forward with something that might work for Hadley. So no details other than that. So that was that was the gist of the communication with Tom Reedy. So we may very well see them back here again. Um, and then the other update I have uh, is uh, from the university. So we did uh, send a list of the possible projects for studio um, student studios uh, for the fall or, or even um, some projects with professor involvement, as we discussed. Um, and uh, Tony Marulis uh, indicated that he wasn't going to be able to be here tonight, but that he uh, was back in touch with the two professors who were present um, to see if he could get an update on their thinking um obviously on campus everything is is uh gunning for uh for graduation um you know and, and tying up the end of the semester so i would imagine we probably won't won't hear until you know another week out or so anything else you know bill or anybody else has heard about that um we need should be on our radar uh -huh. I, I'll just mention that uh, Tom Reedy joined our planning board meeting with um, one of his clients uh, on uh, Tuesday night to hear about 40R. So I think they may be looking at some 40R options. Okay. But um, I, the interest was in the area basically between Chinese Immersion Charter School and Staples, Westgate Center Drive. <clears throat> so I'm not quite sure what what is in there that is undeveloped at this point, but um, we may be looking at a redevelopment prospect. Okay. Okay. Um, I Okay, so that's it on projects. Um, and then uh, two meetings ago, we just touched on, on the possibility of, or just kind of thinking about whether or not it makes sense to try to get better information out about housing and zoning um, to folks, whether we want to consider hosting some sort of an information session. Uh, kind of on the back burner, but just wanted to to put that on people's radar. So I don't know if anybody's had any further thoughts about that. And if not, that's fine. <laughs> I know from I guess, uh, experience that getting people to sit still for a zoning discussion is like herding cats. Uh, right, easily derailed to a topic that's not even relevant. I have um, I, I've, I've done this a few times. I did a presentation to uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion <clears throat> on um, on housing issues, um, and um, that they were receptive. They were really interested in it. I I don't know how. Uh, happy to participate. I just don't know how much bang for the buck we'd get with a uh, sort of a freestanding. We, people tend to be a little more focused when it is literally in their backyard. Then they want to know about the zoning that applies to their backyard. <laughs> yeah, and like I say, my concern is always, um, you know, always trying to find better means of communication. Um, it's the classic case of you know, people are either misinformed because they're listening to pe 
who, who are also misinformed <laughs> or, or like you're saying, Bill, they, they aren't necessarily paying attention and there's, there may be good information out there, but then they're upset because they say, how come I didn't know about this? You know, um, and, and I was thinking along the lines of, and, and Bill, I think you participated in this too, right after I, the, the year that I rolled off of the select board the last time, I don't know, it was like, I think it was 2020, um, we did a Zoom, like Hadley Government 101. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you remember that? And it was it was a general overview over Zoom of kind of how, how the government operates. Um, and, you know, there wasn't a huge attendance. I, I think there were somewhere between 12 and 16 people. We split it into two two separate sessions. And we covered, like, just the basics of, um, you know, town meeting, the role of the select board, elected officials versus appointed versus municipal employees. Um, yeah, again, like a real overview of the government. Um, and then the intent was to encourage people to to volunteer as well. Like, how, how can you find out more information and participate? So, you know, you know, we were in control of the content. In, in that regard, and then just responded to questions as they they came along the way. Um, so I think I'm I'm imagining something like that you know, where we would try to organize the information as best as you know we would see fit. Thinking about okay, if I didn't know anything about this, what sort of information would you want to have? Um, so, again, might that be a good uh, uh, project for the to have online um, with a with a web page that we could uh, send people to? Yeah, the other problem with the web page is it's not interactive. You know, and I and I sometimes just worry, Mark, about static content and how it can be misinterpreted. Yeah, I wonder. Um, you know, on that subject of a web page, I'm remembering sometime maybe last year, I got a mailer, maybe it was from the senior center, I'm not really sure who, but it was about, you know, just a questionnaire survey online that I ended up going and doing. And I really appreciated that because I wouldn't have found it otherwise. I wonder if there's a, a way that we could, you know, maybe do a survey like that and just say, what are the, what subjects are you most interested in learning about to focus the information on something people are interested in? And then maybe through that, they can add themselves to a mailing list to get notified when we put together an info session. I think that has a lot of uh, cross crossover appeal for a lot of municipal activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's something. You know, whether the select board needs to do it or I think you've always been talking a lot about enhancing our digital presence. Yeah. We have uh, what would best be described as a basic, um, what Alex has done with uh, Happy Media, expanding into uh, Facebook, uh, I guess Twitter, I don't go there, and um, YouTube. Um, greatly amplified the reach that Happy Media had under the prior management. So, uh, but it takes, it takes t attention to manage it. Right. Well, like I said, that's one of the, um, just general communications is one of the goals. Um, and I think we're going to be talking about it at a select board meeting coming soon. So maybe I could I could float this idea of a uh, to Bill's point, you know, Justin's idea of having a survey, um, asking people what information are they most interested in, and how would they like to receive it. That sounds wonderful. I don't know what kind of a reception I'll get, but I'll I'll throw it out there, and. Uh, and we'll see. Okay. All right. Thanks, Justin.
Okay, so I don't see Shardul, so I don't think that we're going to be talking about that tonight. Um, that's pretty much uh, the agenda for tonight. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention administratively is actually um, uh, a question that Crystal was just posing. Uh, we're coming up on that time of year. It's the end of May, and Jennifer, remind, Jennifer James from Town Hall reminded us at last night's um, select board meeting that it's time to start thinking about the committee assignments. Usually July 1st, as we moved into the next fiscal year, is when we'll be... Uh, you know, looking to have all of the committees uh, appointed. So I'll send an email to everybody currently on the housing and economic development um, asking if you're interested in continuing on the committee. Um, and so you, you could just respond accordingly. Uh, once that email goes out, I'd appreciate it. And then I'll make sure that that information makes its way to Jennifer so she can put that list together um, and we can um, have folks reappointed who are interested in that. And if there are any vacancies, obviously we'll want to make people aware of the fact that there are vacancies. Um, the other thing that's going to be a change that's coming this year is in part of the, um, again, part of the communication effort and making sure that people who are volunteering are fully informed. Um, there is a volunteer handbook um, that has been updated and it's been updated to include a lot of information about the open meeting law, um, you know, how to run meetings, all of that kind of thing. And uh, we're actually going to be asking people, um, every, every volunteer who participates on a committee, um, that will be sent to them and you'll be asked to read it and acknowledge that you, you've received it and that you're, you're knowledgeable um, based on the contents of it. Okay, so I'm not sure when we're going to have that ready, probably by the end of June, I would think. Um, so I'll, I'll be getting that out to everybody in the group. Okay. So okay. Molly, I did forward the uh, 40R material that we received from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, so if you want to send that around, uh, two of them are kind of dense. One is the actual text of the Northampton bylaw and the other is the state's model bylaw, but there are also some fact sheets in there that uh, show you a little bit about what you can do with 40R in particular communities. Okay, great. Yeah, so when we're done, I will forward um, that material, and then I will send the Pioneer Valley uh, Planning Commission's invitation um, that Justin brought up as well. Okay, I'll also uh, try to find, um, I'm not sure I can, the, uh, the presentation I did to DEI a couple of years ago. Um, I believe it was recorded, so I'll see if, um, see if Alex has it in the archives. Yeah, if I remember, Bill, because I was at that presentation, I think there were, there were a lot of really good questions there, too. So if, if you um, can find the recording, that would be great. I mean, not that your material wasn't scintillating. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, give, give a little baseline of uh, what we've put out there already. Right. Um, right, exactly. So that would be very helpful. Okay. Anybody have anything else? I have, I have one thing. Um, maybe, maybe we could... Um, on a regular basis, keep in mind or look at the existing affordable housing that we have and what are our options on keeping that where it is, you know, down the road. Um, who are, who, who is the contact person? Who are the contact people? I'm just saying there's plenty of time keeping those constantly uh, going so that those don't become an issue and we don't lose what we um, have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think several meetings ago we went, um, Bill walked us through that inventory, but maybe that's something that we can, um, you know, bring that back up again, too. Yeah, planning board has been following it, and we periodically remind the select board that they should be paying attention to it, and they periodically thank us for our input. Uh, Excuse me. <laughs> There's a reason uh, this committee exists, Bill. <laughs> uh, 
it, it, it's uh, unfortunately one of the one of the tasks that probably falls to the town administrator um, to actually um, uh, make things happen here. But uh, I think the town administrator could use a little help from maybe even this committee or some other ways and I think sometimes I know it's down the road and we push things down the road because we got time we got time and I just don't want it to be right beforehand and then we like didn't know what to do mm -hmm. so it was just to keep it active that's all great point the yeah. um, I did a an analysis of <clears throat> what's out there and how the Econo Lodge would have worked into it um, but it was based on 2010 census figures. The state um, is still using 2010 census figures for the affordable housing index. Uh, even though we've now had the 2020 census, the particular data set from the 2020 census that has the number of full-time seasonal unit, a full-time dwelling units, not non-seasonal, um, has not yet been released by the Department of Commerce. So the state affordable housing index has not yet been updated. But uh, we're probably going to be dropping a little bit because we have more new homes and no more affordable units. Mm. Yeah, and I think um, to, to Bill's point, too, about kind of where the responsibilities lie, uh, you know, right now, uh, if you recall on that that inventory that we went through previously, um, you know the big one is um, I keep, still want to call it Winfield uh, v Vesta. Yes, Vesta. Um, that's the one with the largest units, and then there's also uh, Mountain View. And there are there are times where there's activity related to those projects that um, you know, as Bill indicated, kind of fall to the town hall offices as opposed to planning board or anything else. So uh, for next meeting, I'll, I'll put that on the agenda so that if there is anything to report relative to any of the properties where the inventory is not permanent, right? We don't need to worry about Golden Court and that, but um, for the non-permanent inventories, maybe keeping that, um, as Amy has requested, as a somewhat of a standing item. Yeah, because if something needed ahead of time, so say there was a negotiation, uh, uh, negoti we can um, talk about something such as a, a water main or something that where they had to put money into, and we can talk about increasing in uh, the time period, or or even even we could do it not necessarily on the dime it happens, but maybe we can do it ahead of time mm -hmm. if if the need is there, especially if there is a benefit for them too. You know, we could take advantage of their that benefit. So, and, um, and is is there any update on uh, the um, North Hadley Hall? Were, weren't they going to put some? Were at one point going to put something in there, or am I wrong? Nothing. Uh, we had a uh, discussion with them at a a business session of a planning board meeting a few months ago where they were talking about what can we do there. And um, we talked about what some of the options were and what might require variances, what might be able to be done without variances. Um, but we have not seen any formal plans or even informal plans. Uh, they When they came in, they really didn't even have a, a back of the envelope sketch. They just wanted to talk about ideas hmm. thanks <laughs> okay um, so that's our agenda for tonight does anybody have anything else relative to the posted agenda or anything that they want to see on a uh, at our next meeting I just have to learn more about everything so I can be a, a more service <laughs> It just could be a sponge for now, Crystal. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm just listening and soaking it everything up. <laughs> okay. Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn then? So moved. Yes, moved. Okay. <laughs> Adjourned. Okay. All in favor? 
Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.